Picture an everyday item, like a teeter-totter or a bouncy castle, and then supersize them. Then throw in an over-the-top experiment, like a, a bridge 1,000 meters above a dam, and you have some of the world's biggest stories, all of which will be featured during Daily Planet's Gigantic Week. I keep saying it that way, but it feels like it should be said that way. <laughs> so joining us for a sneak peek on what we can expect is Daily Planet's host, Dan Riskin and Zaya Tong. Thank you for being here. Well, Emery, uh, earlier when we were in the green room, you actually did it differently. You did it with reverb. Gigantic right? gun <laughs> to I don't do it as well as Ben, though. He's got that great low timber. Yeah. <laughs> All right. How did Chuck Ein keep it a secret? Is that my saying that name correct? Are we talking about the teeter-totter right so, now? I guess so, yeah. So this is a grandfather, and in essence, for two years, he worked on this backyard project. His dream was to be in the Guinness Book of World Records. And he's got grandchildren, he's got great-grandchildren, he's a, an expert welder. And he was building this really bizarre contraption in the backyard. Nobody could quite figure it out. I think he was building an ark? Yeah, who knows? <laughs> exactly, right? 36 meters long, 15 meters high. And finally, they realized Grandpa was building a teeter teeter-totter, hopefully to keep the kids safe, not kill them, because that thing looks incredibly dangerous. Wow. But in essence, what he did was he modified the seats, as you can imagine, really steep to be on something Look like that. Look at that shot. Exactly. Oh. So he's made it a little bit like a Ferris wheel. So in essence, the seats sort of swing like this so that they stay level. I can imagine there's all sorts of challenges that you face when you're putting something together like this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even to just ride it. I mean, you can't kick the ground to go up, right? So he's had to build this like right. pump system so that when you get to the top, you yank a rope and then it pulls a pulley and this stuff and so then it provides the force to I mean it's still a teeter-totter right the balances forces and you just have to give it a little push and that sends it up and down but it's uh it's something else to sit up on the top of that thing and it's uh, what I like most about this story is that he designed it he did one sketch and then he sort of hit it and the rest was all in his head so wow. all the math all that stuff he just sort of knew what he was doing mm. it's uh and it, you need a big backyard don't you just want to go and ride on it you do amazing all right what about the world's largest bouncy castle yeah so this is in belgium and basically it's uh it's an obstacle course of bouncy castle components that to get sort of an s-shaped snaking thing that goes through this big warehouse and it, in total it's 190 or 290 meters long Wow. And uh, it takes about four minutes to run this thing if you're going full tilt. And so they set up a competition where, like, you get a team of four and you try to go through this thing as fast as you can and you get so exhausted and you get to be a kid again. But, the, you know, there's some engineering. you got to get uh, 38 blowers to fill this thing together so they're all blowing at the same time. You need a enough electricity that you can power all those because each of them draws as much power as a washing machine. So, but, and then you, like... You, when wow. you see a bunch of kids playing, it looks fun, but then you think about how much force those bags have to exert to hold the forces of all those kids who are jumping. So let's say they triple their body weight every time they land. So you I mean, there's a lot of physics in this, and it's just, it's the best use of science possible. This is great science, great engineering. <laughs> and getting young minds excited about it too, right? You totally. realize what you can do. Uh, all right, we talked a little bit off the top about a bridge, this massive yeah. bridge. Describe more of it to us. Well, this is the Hoover Dam Bridge. In essence, it's a bypass because, as you can imagine, the actual Hoover Dam Bridge, well, it's a tiny little snaky road that gets jammed up by a lot of tourists. So they created this bypass. You can see it's really, really high up there. It is a gigantic engineering feat. And so people have to go in and inspect this baby, and it's engineers who get sent in to do it. They are rappelling off the sides. They have three kilometers long ropes with which to keep themselves stable. Yeah, you can see they're sort of wow. like, it looks like they're dangling by a thread there, but hopefully they do know what they're doing. And they are looking hopefully. for little, little crevices <laughs> and little cracks. And so if they do see them, they have this, you know, wonderful gizmo, in fact, that aligns all the iron inside, iron filings that they fit inside and then they paint over it. And that's the process by which they do it. You know, not only is it spectacle and fun for us to look at, but just to get idea of the teeny little bits of science that have to be put yeah. into everything, yeah. every part of these gigantic experiments. Yeah, and it feels like with a bouncy castle, if things go wrong, eh, <laughs> with, with that bridge, <laughs> right. if you don't get the science right, eh, it's a bigger deal. What is the draw to these types of experiments? What do we love about, you know, pushing our limits to make things gigantic? I think there's something really gratifying. I think that's the inverse of why Lego is fun, right? When you build a car at a Lego and you can roll it around, immediately you can get some sense of why cars have four wheels and not three mm -hmm. because of how it balances and stuff like this. And then by, you know, by the same token, when you take something that you sort of understand and you try to make it really big, it becomes more complicated. Like we've got a great story about a, an excavator making pizza. So you take something that is best done by hands this size, and then you take an 8,000 you know, kilogram excavator and you use it to grab a knife and cut onions and to 
pick up grated cheese and to roll dough. And those things become very difficult. And it's just because when you change scale like that, you know, things become more complex, less complex, less understandable, more understandable. It changes things. And so we figured it'd be fun to do a whole week as big as possible. See, there's Juppe right now. He is the excavator, uh, basically the man who's making this pizza. I don't know why he's not smiling, because we certainly would be. <laughs> uh, but basically, he's got these two joystick-like controls, and they wanted to see, could you actually make a pizza with a cat excavator? As you can see, he's able to do everything, like spread the sauce. Um, he's able to do things like cut onions. He doesn't even need to cry, because he's got the the excavator he's, he's there doing it. all of it and uh, yeah so we have just lots of fun ideas on Daily Planet we don't just dream big we dream gigantic I love it all right Dan Riskin and Zaya Tong thanks for being here on your morning today looking forward to this week if you want to see more big spectacles you can check out Daily Planet's gigantic gigantic it's going to run from March the 6th to the 10th it's at 7 o'clock on Discovery Channel